Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Now today we're going to be taking a look at the new Eternal Engine event. Now apparently a lot of people are very very confused about this event, even though I think it's way easier compared to the last event. Now, don't worry about it, I'm going to go through everything you need to know about this event. It's consider this as like an Eternal Engine event guide, so without further ado, let's get into this. Alright, before we start, I want to talk about the story chapter first. I know a lot of people don't care about this shit, but listen to me. If you are still like considering like should you pull Bianca or should you not, maybe you don't like her playstyle or anything, you could try in like the story mode, I think it's around like 10.7 to 10-9, yeah. Here you could play test Bianca first, so if you don't know should you pull it or should you not, or would you end up liking this unit, make sure you go and play test her first and see if it actually suits you. If you like it, go for that um, banner, go for the second banner which is the 60 pity banner and go for the uh, S class Bianca. Now, one more thing that you guys would probably notice in the new interlude stages. Now, if you don't own the construct or maybe like units, you cannot play the um, interlude. Now, if you take a look at my A line interlude, it's pretty much complete, but it's still unlocked because from the last event, we actually have access to the interludes where if we even if we don't own the construct, we can still farm in interludes without having to do gotcha to trying to get that character. Now they updated the patch this time. Yeah, I know it sucks, but we do get Sophia in the event stages when we're farming, we could get her shots, so we'll probably be able to unlock um Sophia anyways, but I think I'm probably the only person who doesn't have Ayla yet. Be most of you are probably farmer, or maybe if you got her in the gotcha already, so yeah. I don't think it's a, like a huge problem. Now, Eternal Throne is very, very simple to understand, right? Go for GT2 if you want to farm the event currency, which you'll get around like 95 to 105 drops per stage. GTN3, this is where you go farm for the 6-star memories, so if you need 6-star memories, go farm GTN3. Now, all of this costs like around 30 serum, and I think a lot of you noticed that you have like a daily EXP limit and in terms of like level and everything now. The level is really important because every single time you reach a certain level, you end up getting black cards and event currency and this royal token which you could use it to exchange for like the rewards here. It's a cumulative one, you don't have to waste the tokens to get the rewards. All you have to do is just accumulate a hundred of them to claim all the rewards. Very simple. Now let's go back to Eternal Throne. So every single time you do this run, you could go for like maximum like what? Four times, which is, I'm oh, sorry about that. Four times, maximum four times, which is around like 120 serum. Saving a time, you don't have to quit, restart, quit, restart, quit, restart, doing all over again. Now, we do have a chances of getting this drop, which is called the Magnetic Ticket, which is gonna be used to like switch the Abyss. You're gonna use it in this stage, where all you'll need to do is like use four tickets to get into this stage, and you're guaranteed, almost guaranteed to get like a six star memory. So, it's very, very simple. So just like me, I think some of you are probably hoarding on Serum Bundle as well and you're asking like should I use all of it on day one or should I use it slowly over the course of the event. I really don't, I really think it doesn't really matter because take a look at how much um, Serum you get every single day. 240 for 24 hours, 10 per hour, 60 from the mission tab which is right here, and an extra 60 from the dormitory if you clear like at least two missions you'll be able to get it from daily here, another 60. So you'll be getting around like 360 serum every single day. Now let's go back to Eternal Throne. 360 serum every single day. And you could probably do like 12 runs in this. 12 runs times 50 per stage, you'll be able to hit 600 every single day. If, if you don't do the Apus, because the Apus does cost serum to do 10. Uh, maybe you want to do this every, every single day. I think when you hit the bosses, you'll be done. But... It does contribute some serum to there, so you might not be able to hit the daily cap 60. So maybe you might want to save like one or two serum bundle for this purpose. All right, now let's talk about the exchange. I'm gonna make it short because it's super easy. For new players, even for OG players, if you don't have hasten yet, prioritize on pa uh, prioritize on hasten. If you want to resonate it, make sure you get your four piece first that fits with your. Um, rest of the two piece which is going to be Federic or Candelina for your S class Bianca and then another eight piece to resonate them. The second thing that you have to focus on is definitely like the free construct which is going to be Sophia. Get her, done with it, get over with it and then the third thing is probably going to be prioritize on whatever you need. Maximizing your units, um, if you need skill points go for it, if you need the L pod go for it, if you need the currency go for it. 
And the final thing is probably gonna be like this. Roland or whatever, these are collectibles. I usually get them by the end of the event because I need or I don't prioritize on them that much. I would only get them like in the end of the event when I really have nothing else to do. I would uh, prioritize my serum on getting all these materials, uh, overclock materials and resource to kind of push my construct to like level 80 because that's what I'm aiming to do at this patch. Now for those who don't actually know what this is, let me show you. This is essentially like a chibi in your Darwin tree if you, if, because you can't own like the enemy in your team comp, right? But you can get the chibi like this, Archer, from the event currency shop. So it's pretty much like a collection for you. It depends on you. If you want to prioritize on units first, then don't go for this. If you have nothing else to do, then maybe if you want something that is pretty much gonna be exclusive. It's definitely not gonna come back in a future version. Maybe it, would, maybe it won't, but if you want it, you could go for it. It depends on how you play the game. Now, Tower of Torture is still gonna be Tower of Torture. You will have to wait until the 19th of October to do that. It's probably gonna be super hot, so you know, we all know how it feels. And we have Full Speed Ahead. Full Speed Ahead is probably gonna be like the Black Flash for the last Fallen Star event, which is pretty much you're gonna be dealing with a huge boss, which a lot of people like to call it ugly crap for some reason. Crap is not like crap, like crap, the thing that has like, you know, crap. You have to do it with like five difficulties. You're probably gonna be able to get some black cards and some royal tokens as well. So yeah, it's nothing to worry about. I think most of the people will be able to speed through all the five stages. It's pretty much like free black cards for you guys. Now the final thing what I wanna say is Apis. A lot of people are very confused with this. Don't get confused. It's super, super easy to understand. A lot of people think that all oh, the first day they want to get, they want to lock into like four day or team characters to get that buff, and they end up locking like very, very weak units. But they didn't invest any resource into. Now, don't worry. Every single day when it hits like five o'clock in UTC time, whatever the time zone you're in, look at this. I've already done all of this in day one, and I actually picked like Lucia Lotus. Um, Karenina and Liv, A class Liv. But guess what? The second day after it all refreshed, now I need to pick a new team again. So even if like on day one you lock on weaker units, you'll be able to refresh it every single day. You'll be able to get um, new formation every single day. So don't worry about it. If you still want to follow, this is not designed for you to, you have to pick these units to get all the buff. Think about it. If you don't have any of these characters built, even with all those buff, you're gonna be, be super super weak, right? Gaining 5% more support points from battle, gaining a 20% discount in the tactical shop. All of this, from the tactical shop or whatever, it's all about like adding damage for your units. So if your units are weak, no matter what you pick for those to add buff, you're not gonna be able to clear the content. Because the, the content in there is actually pretty challenging for new players that don't have like enough BP. But for those who are playing it since launch, it shouldn't be a problem for you. So. For new players out there who can't clear it, don't go for the team construct. Go for whichever units that you have are the strongest in your team. So just go for your strong units. And in terms of the path, I don't really think it's important because, I mean, if you take a look at the rewards, it's not it's nothing impressive. Maybe like some six star memory shards, which is to be honest, not that rare. If you farm GT entry and you end up getting a random memory six star memories that you don't want. Just recycle it and you'll still be able to get like 50 memory shots anyway, so it's not that important. And the train ticket, I mean it does drop in the event um, stages, so nothing to worry about. And yeah, I don't think it's the reward that you absolutely have to have. So don't even worry about this event, it's just like a game mode to, you know, try to not be like the same from the last event. They're trying to put on something new for you to enjoy. And maybe you could play Tastro Bianca in this stage if you have like no pain cage bosses or war zone that is in electric zone right now. That's where you get to play test your new shiny units in this kind of stages. So just keep going. Don't really it doesn't really matter because the rewards is not black cards. All you get is like um, event currency, some currency and support points. So it really doesn't matter. Just keep going until you hit the bosses and that's it. And one more thing, um, in terms of like, as you can see here, there's like a sub support obtained. Those support units means like if you don't have a certain character, you could use the support units, but it's only gonna be in like one run. It's probably gonna be gone off like one state or something like that. But because I have all of it, I have Kamui, I have Lotus as well, that's why it doesn't show up as a support. If you actually show up as a support, I think it would have like a recommended gear for them that might be stronger for units for like new players if you don't have any strong units yet maybe those support units does have like a recommended gear they have like six star memories equipped 
they have like good weapons equipped so they might help you to get through the content that you're not able to get through so very simple to understand and hopefully this video solves your confusion if it actually helps you in any way make sure to give it a like and subscribe for more and make sure to comment down below like what do you think about the new event that you're trying to do is it actually interesting or is it just a waste of time make sure to let me know in the comment section below and probably gonna end this video here and see you next time peace